Yup, you see it, bro. You see it is there. Your eyes don't deceive you. How the heck did I get this thing? Buckle up, because I got a quick story for you, all right? So there I was, middle of the Pacific Ocean, minding my business, chilling, deep diving 300 feet under water. The pressure almost crushed me. So you know me, I'm an island boy. That's nothing to me. I just had to do like Dory from Mimo and just keep swimming bars. So I swam to the point where I met up with Poseidon. I said, what's going on, gang? He said, what's up, my boy? What do you need? I said, stop asking me dumb questions. You know I'm here for that pure fish oil. I'm trying to build a fish tank. So bro said, of course I'll give you the fish oil, you insolent fool, on an even exchange. I said, I got that on me. I gave him some adobo. He gave me the fish oil. I dabbed him up. Came back to the surface. And that's how we ended up with this thing here. Look at it. Yeah, that's how it happened. Oh my gosh, is that story true? First of all, you're breathing too hard. You're too close to me. Back up six feet. You're asking too many questions. So with that being said, what it really do? DC gang, welcome back to the channel, my boys. My gangsters. As always, I hope you guys are having a great day out there, gang. She. So with that being said, there it is. It's a ice barrier, a gaudy, gaudy ice barrier deck. I did make this one of these like a year ago, so I wanted to bring it back, especially with the new support. Because ironically, this thing is a one and a half or just one card combo into your Gotti combo, which is insane. Because you can still do your Ice Barrier combo while you do the, the Gotti combo, which is really crazy, right? So with that being said, it's a 44 card deck list. Just a quick reminder, if you guys enjoy the content, please remember to leave a like, share, comment and subscribe to the boy because i would greatly appreciate it we're gonna start with three max c for maxi reasons mainly to help us go in second so we can throw this out stop our opponent's turn and draw the cost you know how maxi works and there it is we only run one copy of each of the prevalent gaudy cards meaning one paces we're gonna run one shift one self and one keef and you're probably wondering why i'm gonna go over that in a second just know that we're running one copy of each then we're gonna run two copies of the mirror mage I was running three copies but I kept opening up with it and then this thing and then my hand was dead so because of that reason I bumped it down to two because most of the time you're gonna want a uh, special summon this thing off of the effect of the revealer so we only played two copies of that we're gonna play one warlock of the ice barrier shout out to everybody that told me about this thing in the last ice barrier video um, this thing is tough. It basically stops your opponent from being able to um, sit down and activate their spells, right? It's basically like a, a walking fragrance. So then we're going to run three Ash Blossoms, of course, for Ash Blossom reason to stop the Maxi because we do horribly under Maxi. We give our opponent like 30 cards just to freaking bring out one monster. Then we're going to play three copies of the Revealer of the Ice Barrier. This is basically your most important card in the deck because you're gonna normal summon this is your one and a half combo starter it's unfortunately it's not a one card combo but it is a one and a half you're always gonna need a card to discard because you're gonna normal summon this send a card to the graveyard special summon your mirror mage and you do your whole entire combo from there which is why i don't play this at three and again because if, when i was playing it at three i was breaking with it and you open up with the georgias you can't do anything so if you're gonna play this at three i suggest at least playing the speaker at three so that way you could normal summon this special summon the speaker you could do your combo from there so that's also something else that you can do um we're gonna run one general ryo because again we're playing ice barrier this thing is disgusting we're gonna run one snowpios yes only one you don't need more than one we're also gonna run one pisces now the reason why we only need one copy of each of the um gaudy cards is because you don't want to open up with them none of the ice barrier cards are fishes so if you normal summon this and you don't have any other gaudy card you can't even activate this thing's effect to special summon a fish so you don't want to open up with them to do the combo you mainly want to have them in the hand to discard with the revealer which is going to allow you to do combo shenanigans which you're going to see in the replays so that's why we only play one copy of each then we're going to play one uh, three copies of the georgias of course level six tuners special summon another ice barrier monster from the graveyard that's tough we're going to play two ice jays ran uh Agarine. you could play this deck without this it's just it makes a really easy level 10 so we're gonna play it um we play one nebiru for nebiru reasons mainly to cross it out but also for going second we're gonna play three medallions because medallions is broken this thing is tough it searches out any monster not once per turn just three copies of the thing you have three monsters then we're gonna play two triple tactics talent because i'm talented at some point in time i was playing thrust in this deck i played three thrust 
I had to take it out and switch it out for the Super Poly. Um, I played this deck in a bunch of different ratios, a bunch, like a lot of different things, and I'm gonna tell you about that in a second. So then we're gonna play one wins over the Ice Barrier because sometimes you might end up with um, tokens on the field, and you can substitute that token for a level two tuner or a level four if you need for more synchro summoning, which is really cool. And then we're gonna run three Super Polys because the deck was doing horribly going second. I didn't like it. I feel like I needed more board breakers. So I ended up just adding the three Super Poly and the two targets in the extra deck. Then we're gonna run two Cobra the Grace for Cobra the Grave Reasons, while Cross out Designated, two evenly matches. Because like I said, I needed more board breakers and this thing alone can win you games sometimes. I hate getting hit by this card, but this rogue deck here needs that. Then we're gonna run three infinite impermanence for infinite impermanence reasons, one of the best hand traps in the game right now. So for the extra deck, we're gonna run the two super poly targets, which one of them is the Moon Dragon, the other one is the Garura, of course. We're gonna run the Coral Dragon. Now, you don't do the same combo that you do when you play Ice Barrier. You, you know, when you go into this thing, draw a card and draw with the level 9-4. And you kind of do the combo differently. You could always do that combo, but there's a bunch of different combo lines that you could do with this deck. So we're also going to run one Ariompos. I was running it at 2, but decided to run it at 1. Because of the Super Poly targets, we're going to run one White Aurora Whale because this thing is nuts. I like this thing a lot. Then we're gonna run one Animicipated Risen, two Askans, one Trishula Dragon of the Ice Barrier, which I also got Prismatic. I, I don't even, whatever. Then we're gonna run one Reverence Croco Arcus Arca, Arca, So this thing, you could always make this ironically with your Gotti cards doing your turn, or doing your opponent's turn, or doing your turn, which is insane. And being able to draw at least two cards during your opponent's turn can be a little nuts. So you could do that, I'll show you how. Then we're gonna run the Sorcerer Supreme Seven Chen Ying, the boy. We're gonna run Gotti of the Deep and Beyond, because you gotta go deeper. Go with the Ice Jake Gamir, got Brian, of course, for protection of banishing and destruction. And if you, you know, chain it into an activation of a monster or something, you could banish that monster or card, whatever it is. Then we're gonna run the Lancia. Look at it. Yes, I got this thing off of the 3,000 gems off of the Wind and Water event. Because I was still trying to build the freaking voiceless voice deck. And then we're gonna play to Shura Zero Dragon of the Ice Barrier. So that is the whole deck list. I got about five to six replays for you guys. It's about eight actually, but two of them are going second and they're kind of dookie. But I might still show them to you. So with that being said, enough with the yapping. Let's get into the replays. Oh, before I forget and before you ask, so I'm gonna go over all the pros and cons of the deck at the end of the video. Um, is this deck competitive? Not necessarily. It's just a rogue deck and that's a lot of shenanigans. Rogue decks are actually just in a really bad spot right now for the with the game. And I'm gonna tell you why as we go over the replays and all the shenanigans. So let's get into it. Alright, familia, here we are for replay numero uno. Number one of the day. And um, in this one, we didn't get to make the lance yet, just to let you know. But but you're gonna see how crazy and different boys you can make with the deck. Also, um, I was playing three fake veilers during this time. At some point in time, I was playing three drilling lock birds. I ended up getting rid of all the hand traps and going for the super poly to break board. That's the only difference. We're gonna normal summon the revealer. We're gonna send the speaker to the grave to special summon the mirror mage. Get the revealer out of here. Give me three tokens. And this is the crazy thing the mirror mage plus a token equals an Arion pulse. Easy peasy, Arion pulse, the easiest Arion pulse of your life. Activate its effect, activate the mirror mage. Now, because we don't have a fish in the graveyard, we're gonna banish something different, but here we're gonna get ourselves the Georges with the mirror mage, and with the Arion pulse, we're just gonna banish any one of the two level tools that come back later, which is either the paces or the shift. Now, if we would have sent a Paces or Shift to the Graveyard with the effect of the Revealer, we would have sent the Pisces instead of one of the level 2s, but it's fine. So here we're going to activate the Georgia Special Summon it, that we can activate bring the level 2 tuner back, activate the Speaker to get an extra token, so that way we could use two tokens and the Georgias to go into an animated basic drag guy. Of course, we could have went into the Lancia, but I'm showing you different boards as we use all three of these monsters to go into the Revenant Proco Dragon. Bring it out here. Now we get to draw two cards. So for this thing, activate the Arion Post, banishing itself to bring a Gotti card to our hand, right? So here we're gonna get the Keef to the hand. Why the Keef? You're gonna see. So here we're gonna draw two cards, and this thing is a fish monster. So in sense it's a fish monster, I can activate the Keef to special summon it onto the field. So this is our board. We have a Papa card on the field. We have a, if they special summon, we banish. We have a spell and trap negate. We have infinite impermanence, Cobra the Grave, and effect Baylor in the hand. 
and our board gets better now as we activate the patience bring it onto the field all right but where's your level six this is the crazy part keith is going to bring our level six onto the field you're going to see how as they normal summon the keeper they're going to send a serenade to the graveyard we're going to infinite impermanence stop playing against branded i don't want them adding no super polymerization or whatever to the hand negate that thing it's a 60 card deck, so here they're going to activate the Serenir. Sending the Bristol Villain to the graveyard, activating the Fusion Deployment. Yes, we could have negated that with the Animizer Petter Recent Drag Eye, but I'm holding that for the um, Branded Fusion or the Grass is Greener. Because here they're going to special summon a Fallen of Alvas, which triggers our Keith as he activates his effect. Again, Keith gets to activate, and like I told you, Keith is going to bring the level 6 that we need onto the field, which is an Arion Pulse bring it back out here so right now on the field we have our level 10 banish everything or we have a level 8 Ascan to banish something right so he's gonna activate the base of Jerusalem banishing the Serenir no then now we're gonna call by the grave the Serenir so that way we could prevent them from special summoning the Jerusalem onto the field stop that right there so here they're gonna set down a back row. I'm gonna activate the Revenant's Crow of the Dragon, send it to Crash to the Graveyard, so cover the Grave, we're gonna pop that. So here we're gonna use the Paces to use itself and the Ariel uh, Post to go into the White Aurora Whale. Bring it out here. Chain link one, activate the Ariel Post, banish itself. So that way we could banish a different card. Well, bring a card to the hand, which is gonna be the uh, Snowpios. This thing gets popped in the face, activate the Snowpios, banish two fish monsters from the graveyard, special summon it. One of those fishes was the Seth, because the Seth gets to come back onto the field. So we still have our level 10 banish everything, if is one, or a level 8 right here, but we don't need it, because all they have is one card. Here we're going to join to another um, Georgius, we're going to activate the Keep in the graveyard. They're going to activate the Deersum to banish a monster from the graveyard to special summon it, which is fine with us. Keith, bring it back onto the field. Now, mind you, I activated the Animizer Petter uh, Recent Drag Eye. And this is why we play Nibiru too, because if you hit Nibiru, which is a rock monster, you get to send a card back from the field to the hand, which is hilarious. And now we're going to use all three of these monsters to go into the sources to bring several changing. Bring it out here. That's going to trigger the Snowpios to banish a fish, which is the Keith. Bring it back to the hand. You see how much recursion you get? And yeah, it's great. And we're gonna slap him in the face. And we never even made the lands yet. Which in the next replay I think we're gonna see. So with that being said, let's go into the next replay. Alright gang, here we are for replay number those. Number two of the day, we're going second against uh U Bell, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so here they're gonna normal summon the Dark Beckoning Beast, getting itself the opening of the Spirit Gate on the Rock Lee, activate that thing's effect, getting themselves the Carol Summoning Beast to the hand. Of course, they're gonna activate the Nightmare Pain, following that up to pop a Dark Monster. We're gonna throw out the Max Seed. Um, they don't have anything for it, surprise, surprise. But they didn't do full combo or anything like that. They're just gonna pop the Spirit of Bell, getting themselves the Squirmer. Now they're gonna use the Chaos and the Spirit of Bell that they sent to the graveyard, especially summon the Phantom of Bell. And that's, that's their board, right? So here we're gonna join to the Ice Rank and Mirror. Now mind you, we have a bunch of ways of comboing off. So we're gonna activate this thing's effect. We're gonna send the Revealer. Why are we sending the Revealer? Since it's a one card combo because we have a medallion. It's that simple. So we're gonna special summon the Ram. We're gonna get ourselves the token. He's not gonna negate this. So we're gonna go into the closest to bring several chain Ying. One of the toughest animations. Now we're gonna activate the medallion. We're gonna get ourselves the revealer to the hand. He's gonna draw a lock grab. So that is going to affect the way we do things. We're gonna activate the triple tactic talent because we're talented. And I had to look at the hand because I'm tired of going for the battle phase and this thing special summoning. So we're not gonna do that. Send the thing back to the deck, get it out. Now we're gonna normal summon the revealer. We're gonna send the. Um, the effect related to the graveyard and they're going to activate the phantom of your bell and notice how we didn't get rid of the cover the grave this whole time or used it because i was saving it for this moment here cover the grave the phantom of your bell and now we get multiple benefits over the cover the grave because now we get to negate the phantom of your bell get it out and now we get to get also get rid of the pain so here we're going to special summon the mirror mage Again, you banish something to get rid of the pain, get rid of the drawn and lava from the graveyard, activate the mirror mage, give me my three tokens, I need those. So because of the um, draw and lock break though, we are going to go into the Arion pose because we can't draw cards or anything like that. We might as well set up a little board, activate Arion pose, banish the paces, battle phase, 
slap this stuff for the 2100, slap it for the 3400, and we're gonna end our turn. Which, mind you, even here, they're gonna draw a card, we activate the paces, paces get to go back onto the field. We could always make a level 10, um, a level 8 here, we could make a level 10 if we all. 2, this is 8, and this is 10. So we have the level 10 or level 8, or we could make the level 9 Croco Dragon and draw about 2 cards. So a lot of different options. They're going to activate the opening of the game, special summon the Dark Breaking and Beast. We're going to use both of these monsters here to go into the Ash. Immediately bring it out here because we know they have a Squirmer in the hand. Activate the Ash, and we're going to banish the um, gates, activating the Ariopos, and they're going to scoop. Much GG after that. We ex know exactly what they have in the hand. After the gates is gone, they only have the Dark Beckoning Beast. Yeah, they can special summon the Squirmer, but what's that gonna do? And then because we banish something, I'm also gonna banish the the the, <laughs> the Dark Beckoning Beast anyway. So with that being said, let's go into the next replay. Yes, sir. Here we are for replay number three, number three of the day. Now this will happen to you. Just a warning. You will open up with awkward hands here and there, right? Because, you know, whatever. I don't know why I play one copy of each one of these cards. And sometimes I open up with, like, three of each one of them, which is insane. I'm like, what are the odds of these ratios? But either way, we're going to normal summon the Speaker, especially summon the Georgias. And again, it's an awkward hand. We're just going to make a land. That's all we have. They haven't activated any monsters effect or anything. So Triple Tactic Talent is dead. We're going to set down the Cross our Designator and our turn. So here we're playing against Fire King, they're gonna activate the infinite impermanence. The fact that this thing has no protection for itself sucks sometimes, I can't lie. But the crossword is gonna protect us. As we're gonna get rid of the infinite impermanence here, stop that right there. They're gonna normal summon the ash. Activate the ash effect, getting itself the legendary Ponyx. They're gonna set down the Fire King Island because of course they already have it. Popping the Ponyx, getting itself the Fire King Arvata. Of course, they also have the Garunix in the hand to special summon. Activate Garunix. We're going to activate the Lasha because she's special summoned. So we're going to special summon the Ryo onto the field. I need that. So now he has to pay for this. Sending a side frame driver to the graveyard. Activating the Fire King Kirin. Popping the, um, the Ryo. So I'm going to try and bring it back. So that's why I'm activating this thing's effect. But he does have the, fire, um, the Negate here with the Fire King Arbata. So we're gonna get negate this so sad times for us. Again, the Garuna still gets popped though. So here he's gonna activate the Ash and go for these cards to the graveyard. Special summon the Flamebird. Activate the Flamebird's effect. Put the Lancia in the back, set that in the back row. Slam it for the 300 and end their turn, right? Because he knows that I have an awkward hand. He knows I don't have a lot of follow-up. All he has to do is send this to the graveyard. Or me destroy it and send it to the graveyard. They're gonna set up a mini wall and start popping up. So luckily for us, we joined to the Triple Tactic Trust. Like I said, at some point in time, I was playing three copies of this. So we joined to that. They get the ponies to the hand. Now I'm gonna activate the thrust. Getting myself the medallion to the hand. We're going to activate the medallion. Getting ourselves the revealer to the hand. Normal summon the revealer. Activate the revealer. Send the um, self to the graveyard, special summon the mirror mage, get the revealer out of here to special summon my tokens. And here we're gonna go into our level 6 core dragon because I'm gonna use this as material. So I want to draw cards off of it, right? Bring it out, activate the mirror mage. They're gonna cover the grave, unfortunately. Here, what I was going to do was get my um, Georgias so that way I could special summon it, bring back the level 2 tuner, or bring back a level 4, make a level 10, or whatever it is that we wanna make. But unfortunately, Cobra the Grave is a thing for us. Down the digits, the mirror mage is gone. Get it out of here, sad times. So now our whole play has to change because we don't have anything. We're gonna have to activate the speaker, get another token onto the field, and use all of these to go into a Trishula Dragon of the Ice Fairy. Bring it out here. This thing is nuts nice, because now we get to banish a card from the graveyard, banish a card from the field, and from the hand. As we're gonna draw a card with the Coral Dragon, we're gonna go into a revealer for follow up, get the Snake Eyes out of here, get the Garunix out of here, and then get the Pornix out of here, which is also your follow up. Slap you for the 2700. End phase. He's gonna draw a card, and they have nothing. Because we legitimately got rid of the most important card. <laughs> Flameberg is gone, which you play one copy of. Um, Garunic is gone, which you might play two copies of, but some people play one. And your opponent is gone, which people definitely play one copy of. So, with that being said, let's continue. 
Alright gang, here we are for replay number 4 number four of the day. So here we're going first once again, we basically have the one card combo with the medallion, which is never a one card combo, it's a one and a half, we're gonna get the revealer, activate the revealer, we're gonna send the bison to the graveyard, special summon the mirror mage, get the revealer out of here, special summon our three tokens out to the field, cause we need those, again we're always gonna make the Ariopo, so we wanna play Dottie, so bring it out here. We're going to activate the Mirror Mage effect, activate the Arion Pulse. So with the Arion Pulse, we're going to banish a Snowpios, and you're going to see why, as we're going to get the Georges to the hand. Snowpios is going to activate, banish the Pisces, bring the Snowpios back. Now with the Pisces, we're basically going to get rid of the um, uh, Arion Pulse here, so we can special summon the Pisces, activate the Pisces effect, getting ourselves the Paces, so that way we can banish the Paces. Activate the Georgia, special summon it, activate Georgia's effects, special summon the mirror mage. We're gonna use all three of these monsters here. We're going to the Revenant Proc Dragon. Activate its effect. We're gonna draw two cards here. We're gonna set down a back one and I turn. Now this board is what the heck are you looking at? Your board is never your board. Your board starts happening during the standby phase. <laughs> Cause we, we have we have plays, trust me. As they're gonna activate the super polarization. I'm actually happy that I didn't go into the Atlantia and all the extra shenanigans. Cause now we would have broken our board. As we activate the paces, they go super poly. Use the super poly to make a move dragon. Bring it out here. Now my infinite permanence can't do anything to that, we're gonna special summon the paces here. They're gonna activate the mature chronicles, activating the mood dragons, that way we can't target dark. Which is really bad cause he legitimately shows off I only negate. As he's gonna activate the nightmare throne, I'm gonna activate the snowpeels here, banishing two fishes from the graveyard. So I can special summon the snowpeels, and that's gonna trigger our place, right? Cause here they're gonna get themselves the dark beckoning beast. We're going to activate the Snowbird targeting itself, activate the Pisces that we can banish to banish the Seth that we have in the hand. Bring it out here. Now we're going to activate the Pisces, activate the Seth. So the Seth is going to special summon itself back onto the field, which we can use it to sink the summon. Pisces is going to get us a Keep that we're going to banish anyway, so he comes back later. Activate the Seth, use both of these monsters to make a level 8. White Aurora Whale, because we can't target the Moon Dragon, we're going to have to non-target pop it to get it out of here. So here they're going to normal summon the Dark Breaking Beast, now we can target things, so we're going to hit that thing with an Infinite Impermanence. And we still have a level 8 banish, level 10 banish, everything on the field, which is crazy. Here they're gonna show us the spirit of your bell. They're gonna send this thing back, special summon a phantom of your bell, and they're just gonna scoop. Cause there's legitimately nothing else for them to do. As soon as he does anything weird, again, we could make a level 8, we could make a level 10 and try and go from there. If he decides to stop that, what is he gonna do? Pop a spirit of your bell and bring an OG your bell? That's not gonna do much or anything. So with that being said, let's go to the next replay. Alright game, here we are for replay number 5 number five of the day. And we're going first against Voices Voice and my opponent couldn't even do much against this board. As we activate the medallion, get ourselves the revealer, normal summon the revealer, activate the revealer to the Pisces, special summon the mirror mage. Get the revealer out of here, get ourselves a three tokens. So that will be going to our Arion Post. Activate the Arion Post, activate the Mirror Mage with the Mirror Mage. You can either do two things. You can get the Georgias, which we have in the hand, or the Winds over the Ice Barrier. We're gonna banish a Paces here. We're gonna special summon the Speaker, special summon the Georgias so we can activate, bring back the Mirror Mage. With the Mirror Mage, the Arion Post and a token, we make it level 9 Revenant from the Dragon. Bring it out here. So here now we get to draw two cards, activate the Arion Post to banish the Pisces. Get that thing out of here, we're gonna bring a keep, and look at how the Gotti engine flows. We draw two cards, activate the Pisces, banish the keep that we back to the hand, activate the Pisces effect on the field, bring a sheep out here so we can banish the shit. Insane. And then we're gonna use our level 4 and our level 6 to go into the last year. Oh my, this should have been the first replay, I should have forgot the order. So here we're gonna activate the wind over the ice barrier, we could have left the board as it was, but now nah, we're gonna use a level 2 and a level 6 to go into the Adam Max Dragon. Because it is just negating a spell or trap is just too good right now. With this thing we could protect our land for infinite impermanence as well, so that's what we're gonna do, we're gonna special summon the key. 
especially some of the paces and we're gonna leave a fish monster in the banish zone so that way we can activate the keep special summon onto the field so we can banish a monster here they're gonna normal summon the low activate the low we're gonna hit that zone with the infinite impermanence they're gonna follow that up with the swat of this and we don't have any monster in the game so we just work with what we have so our infinite impermanence gets negated but it didn't matter much because here they're gonna get the barrier of the voices activate the barrier we're gonna negate that with the animation pen and recent drag eye and yeah it's easy. Because as soon, even if he stops that, at, at any point in time he special summons, we're going to activate the Lancia. And if he special summons, whatever he does special summon, he better make sure to have the low and the, the, the skull because he's going to have to negate something. He's going to have to negate the Banish or he's going to have to negate the Lancia. And the Lancia gets to activate again. So, figure it out. Let's continue. Alright, Familia, here we are for replay number 6. Number 6 of the day, and I'm gonna speed this up because it just, hey, every one of these will make different type of boards. So we're gonna get a medallion, we're gonna get the revealer, number some of the revealers, and the cards of the revealers, especially some of the mirror mage. Get the things out of here to get the token so we can go to the Arion pose. Arion pose activate, banish any one of the level 2s. Getting ourselves the win over the ice barrier, activate the Georgia, special summoners, special summon the mirror mage. Get rid of the two tokens, special summon two level 4 so we can make a core dragon use the other level four to make a lash so we could draw a card draw into the super poly activate the speaker banish it and get a token what the heck are you supposed to do with this token you're gonna see we did that on purpose so that's our board that's our board you're gonna see how crazy these boards get as we special summon the faces back onto the field you're gonna activate the Viking sanctuary and this is what i'm telling you you could use all three of these monsters to make the Crocodile Dragon during your opponent's turn, which is insane. Because now we get to draw two cards on top of our board. Bring it out here. He's gonna set the Fire King Island. We're gonna draw two cards, like I said. Activate the Arion Post, banishing itself, so that we could get a card in the hand. Getting ourselves the Snow Pierce to the hand. We're gonna draw two cards, like I said. They're gonna activate the Fire King Island. We're gonna ash that immediately. Stop that right there. Stop that right there. We don't need that. We're gonna normal summon the um the poplar. Getting to sell the simple spoil subversion. Activating subversion so they can push a card in the back. Again, there's no way of me protecting the lance here. He hasn't special summoned yet, so we just have to eat that. As he's gonna link the poplar into a link Rebo. Activate the poplar's effect. Poplar set itself in the back row, activating the Kirin, popping the ash, special summon the Kirin, use both of these monsters to go into the SD. Later night. I should have popped the Link Rebo, but it's fine. This is not that big of a deal. He's gonna banish the Crocodile Dragon. I'm fine with that. Send so to the graveyard to pop the Fire King Island. He's gonna chain Link the S2 Little Night Cakes to a little to banish the Joe which I'm perfectly fine with. Banish both of these. Pop the Field Spell. Banish the Crocodile Dragon. Activate the Island. There's nothing to pop. And face the both of these back. So here immediately I'm just gonna get rid of the this thing as soon as possible so we don't have to worry about it, right? Get it out of here, main phase two, activate the winds over the ice barrier, banish it so I can get the revealer to the hand, and we get full combo, right? Normal summon revealer, get rid of a card, especially summon the mirror mage, get the revealer out of here, get a bunch of tokens. Here we could have set up a really decent board, so I decided to use all of these to go into an ash game real quick because we have a bunch of guys and then that we can chain. Activate the Ascom, we're gonna banish the Poplar, activate the Mirror Base to get a card to the end. Bring it out here. We're gonna get ourselves another Georgian, which we could activate again because we haven't activated to special summon. Activate the Ascom, banish the Snowpiers, bring the Ascom back. Activate the Snowpiers effect, banish the Paces to bring the Snowpiers back to the hand. Activate the Georgian, special summon it, activate Georgian's effect, bring a level 4 back so we can make a level 10. No, we're not, because Rock Dwayne Johnson. And if you're wondering why would you special summon so much on the Nibiru, he was Togo though, if I didn't know he had it. So here the Pacers get to come back onto the field. He's gonna normal summon an Ash, use both of these monsters to go into a Hita. And because I did use an Ash, he's just gonna get the Ash that's in my graveyard, activate the Hita, bring the Ash back onto the field. I'm feeling super, bring the Poly, get these things out of here. Fusion summon into a Moon Dragon of the Swamp. Give me that, it's mine. Here we're gonna go end phase. And yeah, the, the token alone is enough to end the game. It's GG's. 
So with that being said, let's go into the next replay. Hi uh, familia, here we are for replay number 6. I wasn't going to show you the two dookies going second replay, but some people like them, so I decided to do it. Here they're going to activate the Brandon High Spirits. We're going to throw out the Spirits by throwing out the Maxi. But not really because Brandon laughs at Maxi and sits on his face by still setting up about 3 to 4 interruption without giving me a card. And there it is, activate the Iron the Brandon Dragon and the... So off of a normal summon and a spell, bro has about 4 to 3 disruption, 3 to 4 disruption. So we draw into the perfect card, the evilly match, throw the thing out, get rid of 2 of the disruption in the back row, activate the medallion, get us out the revealer, normal summon revealer, send the paces to the page, especially some of the mirror mage, activate the mirror mage, get the revealer out of here, get a token, make an Ariompo, activate Ariompo's effect, activate the mirror mage, so he's gonna special summon the fallen above us. Now I'm, I have turn priority, so before he does all of that, we're basically gonna activate the Georges here, activate the Pisces, Pisces activate, get rid of the Arion Pulse, because I don't want him using it as fusion material to go into the ice of um, the their boss monster. So we're gonna banish the Snowpiers, banish the Pisces, bring the Snowpiers back to the hand, activate the Georges, special summon and he knows. We get full combo for this, it's sad times so for all of that. No bebo mañana. <laughs> so with that being said, let's continue. Alright, so I decided to get a replay that the computer actually let us go first. And this, oh my god, this end is juicy. This end is juicy. And if you're glowing and you have a max, see, I'm fine with that. I'm 100% fine with that. Luckily, hopefully that's all he has. I mean, with this hand, with this hand, if I activate this and he ashes, I have to activate the other one. And if he activates Maxi with Ash, if he has three interruptions, then yeah, we, we're not going anywhere. Um, it said not my turn. Oh, okay. I'm like, what the heck is going on? So yeah, we're definitely going to activate this. No field glow. So what the heck was that? All right, hold this here. We're going to normal summon. Activate. We're definitely going to send the ship to the graveyard. Yeah, bring the mage. Mage activate. Send this to the graveyard. We're going to special summon one, two, and three. No nib. No nib. No nib. No nib. All right, that's good. So we do this. Now this is the beauty of this deck. We have we have extension. We could do whatever the heck we want. So I'm gonna activate this thing's effect. We're gonna activate this here. No, we're not gonna ash our own card. And um, since I can search for anything, I'm gonna search for this spell. Because we already have a medallion in the hand. We're gonna activate this and we're gonna banish the Pisces. Because we already have a shift in the graveyard. Activate this, banish the shift. Special summon the Pisces. Pisces gonna activate. And I'm gonna get myself a key. That's the way we do it. Give me that. We're gonna banish the key. And here we're going to activate. Getting ourselves the Georgius. Yeah. Activate the Stinks effect. Special summon it. We're gonna activate that. Bring back the level 2 tuner. And then here we can make the Croco Dragon. Croco Dragon. And then I get rid of the one token to bring a level 4. That way we draw two cards. So we could we could do a lot of different things. But I do want that, that spell and trap negate. So this is what I'm gonna do. We're gonna go on in my separator reason. Like this. Set this here. We're gonna activate this thing's effect. We're gonna banish itself. And then we're gonna get ourselves a Snowpios to the hand. Now from here, to make a level 10, I need a level 4, and to make another level 8. But to make another level 8, there's no level 8 to make. That's like good for us to make. So what we're going to do is level 2. Yeah, level 2 and level 4. We can make the Crocodile Dragon and make the level 10. So get this out. Get this out. This out. I just got rid of one of the tokens. What a me head. That's fine. You could be the level 4. This could be the level 2. 
What an idiot. Alright, that's fine. So here what we're gonna do is make our level 10 Lancia. And I think we're gonna leave it at that. Let me check something. Because again, we could make another level 8, but we don't have level 8. But we could make the Crocodile Dragon. And then... Uh, yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna do. We're gonna banish this. And we're gonna make the Crocodile Dragon draw 2. And then we could bring back the level 6 later. So, do this, do that, and do this. Set this here. Activate this thing's effect. Drumming too, evenly, anything good. That's really good. And then, what do I, what the heck can I do with this? Ice barrier, blah, blah. We already activated you, you, you. I think this is our board. This is clean. This is clean. And this here. And now we get two monsters that come back onto the field. Yeah, we bring both of these and then we could bring our level 6 that we need to make our level 8 as soon as they special summon. That's the play, that's the board. Yeah, bring this back. No maxi, thank you. Even though we have the ash, but no maxi. Yeah, bring this back. Leave that there. And as you can see, the deck is the deck is kind of nuts. The deck is kind of because this is a really good board. We just don't have any negates except for the uh, infinite impermanence in the back. Trading, I have to ask that. I have to ask that now. The problem with this, well, I'm gonna ask it. We're gonna ask it. If he has the the the. Sarcophagus or whatever, we're gonna pop it. It's better to use the animation play the reason on that. Because I'm assuming this is a Horus deck. It's one of those stupid stun level A Horus decks that people keep playing. What else? Hmm. 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 Interesting. Interesting. I don't really care about these two cards in the hand. Well, there you go. Now you played yourself. So, bro is playing trash. Bro is playing a lot of trash. There it is. We knew it was a Horus deck. Makes sense. Send this to the yard. Activate. Yeah. Set down your spell. Go ahead. Set down your spell. Go ahead. Yeah. No, thank you. I don't like that. I don't like that. If he hasn't evenly, I'm gonna throw it. Because I feel like he's trying to bait out shenanigans for that evenly. If he hasn't evenly, I'm gonna throw up, bro. Oh, no, there we go. All right, well, we didn't even get to use the whole boy. Because as soon as, if he would have managed to special summon one of the Horus cards, I would have activated the Keef, banished whatever Horus he special summon. Because even though they don't activate, they do special summon. So once it does, I activate the Keef. I bring back the Arion pose. Oh, um, yeah, the Arion pose. We banish whatever monster there, and then we have our level 8 banish. We still haven't activated the Lancia. We still have a pop of card, and we still have the infinite impermanence in the back. So the, the deck is cool, it's just, it's not super duper competitive. So let's, let's go back to the deck list. All right, Familia, so that is the deck list. Those are the replays and live gameplay. That's all I have for you today. Um, Is the deck worth building the way it is? I, I would say no. I think you should probably just play pure Ice Barrier because it will just make things more consistent. Um, actually, if you want, if you want, you could just play a really small package, like just play one of the level 2 tuners um, and a Keef. And then you could bring stuff back like that. It, it just depends because then you, you might want the snow peels you actually do. And then this thing is the one that's not super necessary, but as you can see, it kind of blends in. Well, I think this is the smallest package you could run, actually. I wouldn't run this any smaller than this. Unless you just want a level 8 banish, then yeah, just bring any one of the level 2. You make the Arion pose, and then you have a banish during your opponent's turn. If that's all you need, you can do that. But I think just playing pure Ice Barrier might be better than this. Just because it's more um, consistent and you get to run more hand traps and more counter traps or, or counter cards to the hand traps. But this makes a, wetter, a way better turn one point. 
This thing blows out Iceberry's turn on board by a mile. Like, this thing is tough. So, I just don't think you should waste UR materials in building it if you don't have the cards yet. But if you want to try it and fix up the ratios and do whatever you want with it, go ahead, bro. You could definitely climb with the deck. It's just you're not going to have a, full, a fun time doing so. You can win some games, but you're going to probably lose a lot of games. It's prevalent to Maxi. It's prevalent to Drill and Lockbird. It's prevalent to um, Gamma. Almost every hand trap in this game can stop this deck. Because road decks don't, can't play through a bunch of hand traps most of the time. That's the only problem. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoy the content. The Fire Nation got body today, but <laughs> it doesn't mean we're top tier. Continue having a great day. Any common questions and concerns in the comment question below. I try to always reply. Remember to hit that like button. Subscribe if you enjoy the content. And I'm going to catch you guys next time. Peace.